If you've been following the clean energy space closely, you'll know that green hydrogen has always been the promise of the future. A fuel made from water and powered by renewable energy that produces nothing but water vapor when used. It's been called the missing link in the energy transition, a clean molecule to complement clean electrons. Yet one thing has always stood in the way, cost. For years, hydrogen has been too expensive to compete with fossil-based fuels. But today, we're seeing something remarkable. Two powerful forces are finally converging, ultra-cheap renewable energy and breakthrough electrolyzer technologies. Together, they're reshaping the economics of hydrogen, unlocking what might be the most significant energy opportunity of our generation. This is hydrogen's moment. And if you're a developer, consultant, or investor, it's your moment too. Let's start with renewables, the foundation of the entire green hydrogen story. Over the past decade, solar and wind energy have experienced a revolution in cost reduction. What once cost hundreds of dollars per megawatt hour now costs less than 20 in some regions. In places blessed with abundant sunlight or strong wind resources, think Chile's Atacama Desert, Australia's Pilbara region, or North Africa's coastline. Renewable power has become so cheap that during off-peak hours, it's almost free. And that surplus renewable energy, which might otherwise go to waste, is the perfect feedstock for green hydrogen production. For developers, this isn't just about sustainability. It's about economics. Cheap electrons are the first step toward cheap hydrogen. But cheap power alone isn't enough. The other half of the equation lies in the electrolyzer, the machine that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity. For decades, electrolyzers were limited by high costs, expensive materials, and modest efficiency. They worked, but not at the scale or price point required to challenge fossil fuels. That's changing fast. A wave of innovation is sweeping through electrolyzer technology, from alkaline to proton exchange membrane, PEM, solid oxide, and the emerging anion exchange membrane, AEM, designs. These new systems use less rare metals, require less maintenance, and deliver higher efficiency, all while being cheaper to manufacture at scale. Some companies are achieving more than 50% reductions in material use and factory cost per kilowatt. Others are designing electrolyzers that integrate directly with variable solar and wind energy tolerating fluctuations in power input without compromising performance. This adaptability is key because it removes the need for expensive battery buffering or grid balancing. It means hydrogen plants can operate directly from renewable sources, cutting both capital and operational costs. When you combine this technological leap with the continued drop in renewable energy prices, the picture becomes clear. The levelized cost of hydrogen, the all-in cost of producing each kilogram, is finally falling into a competitive range. Let's put this into context. A few years ago, producing green hydrogen might have cost between $4 and $6 per kilogram. That's fine for demonstration projects or pilot plants, but not enough to drive industrial adoption. Now, with cheaper power and more efficient electrolyzers, that cost is dropping fast. In certain regions, developers are already targeting $1.5 to $2 per kilogram the long-awaited threshold where green hydrogen can compete head-to-head -head with traditional carbon-intensive hydrogen. Hitting this target doesn't just make hydrogen viable, it makes it inevitable. Imagine you're developing a large-scale hydrogen project in a region with strong renewables and port access. You secure a long-term solar and wind PPA at $18 per megawatt hour, a rate that would have been unthinkable a decade ago. You pair that with a new generation of electrolyzers that are cheaper, faster to deploy, and more modular. You co-locate your hydrogen production with existing infrastructure, maybe near a steel plant, fertilizer facility, or export terminal. Suddenly, your levelized cost of hydrogen sits comfortably below $2 per kilogram. That's not science fiction, it's happening. Projects like this are being planned right now, and they're transforming the hydrogen business case from an environmental aspiration into an economic reality. To understand why this moment matters so much, think about hydrogen's role in decarbonization. Electricity can't do everything, 
batteries can power cars and homes, but when it comes to heavy industry, long-distance shipping, and high-temperature manufacturing, we need molecules, not electrons. Hydrogen fills that gap. It can replace coal in steelmaking, natural gas in fertilizer production, and bunker fuel in shipping. It can also store renewable energy over long durations, days, weeks, or even months, something batteries simply can't do at scale. So, when hydrogen becomes affordable, it unlocks decarbonization across multiple hard-to-abate sectors simultaneously. That's why this convergence of cheap renewables and new electrolyzers is so historic. It doesn't just make hydrogen cheaper, it makes decarbonization realistic. From a developer's perspective, this convergence creates both opportunity and urgency. The opportunity lies in the economics. Cheaper inputs mean better project margins and faster payback periods. The urgency lies in timing. As costs fall and competition rises, early movers will capture the best sites, partnerships, and offtake deals. Waiting for perfection could mean missing the window. Hydrogen's market is global, and projects that combine low-cost renewables, modern electrolyzers, and smart financing structures will dominate future trade flows. Countries with abundant renewables, like Australia, Chile, Namibia, and Saudi Arabia, are already positioning themselves as major exporters of hydrogen and ammonia. They're building hydrogen valleys and export corridors, partnering with energy-hungry regions like Europe and East Asia. For investors, this is the birth of a trillion-dollar industry. For developers, it's a race to execute efficiently. But there's another story here. The story of systems integration. Cheap renewables and advanced electrolyzers are powerful individually, but their true potential emerges when they're designed together as one system. The best projects aren't just about producing hydrogen. They're about integrating power generation, water supply, storage, conversion, and offtake into one seamless operation. Co-locating hydrogen plants with renewables eliminates transmission losses. Using waste heat from electrolyzers to improve plant efficiency can further reduce costs. Integrating hydrogen output with nearby industries, steel mills, ammonia plants, or refineries minimizes transport and storage expenses. This is where smart design beats raw efficiency. It's not about having the perfect electrolyzer, it's about having the most optimized system. Let's visualize a real-world example. Imagine a developer building a hybrid solar and wind-powered hydrogen plant in northern Africa. The site enjoys more than 3,000 hours of sunshine per year and consistent coastal winds. The plant operates with modular, low-cost electrolyzers designed to follow renewable fluctuations. It's connected to a nearby ammonia synthesis facility, converting hydrogen into ammonia for easy storage and export. The entire system is powered by dedicated renewables, and the waste oxygen from electrolysis is reused in nearby wastewater treatment. Every byproduct has a purpose. The result? A clean, integrated, circular energy ecosystem. That's the direction the hydrogen industry is heading, toward industrial symbiosis, where waste from one process fuels another. Of course, no breakthrough comes without challenges. The path to truly low-cost hydrogen still depends on a few key variables. Electricity remains the biggest cost component, so access to ultra-cheap renewables is essential. Land and permitting can slow projects. Supply chains for electrolyzers must scale rapidly to meet global demand. And hydrogen infrastructure, pipelines, storage, refueling, and ports still requires massive investment. Then there's financing. Green hydrogen projects are capital-intensive, and while government incentives are improving, private capital wants certainty. That means developers must present solid feasibility studies, robust offtake agreements, and clear risk mitigation strategies. Those who can build confidence will attract the capital first. The good news is that momentum is on our side. Policy support is expanding fast. The U.S. Inflation Reduction Act the European Hydrogen Bank, and emerging national strategies in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa are all pushing hydrogen forward. Supply chains are localizing, electrolyzer factories are scaling up, 
and investment in hydrogen ports and corridors is accelerating. These developments reinforce the cost-down trajectory and create an ecosystem where technology, policy, and finance are aligned. It's no longer a question of if hydrogen will be cheap. It's a question of when and who will capitalize first. So what should developers and consultants be doing right now? First, update your cost models. If you're still basing your financial assumptions on outdated electrolyzer prices or older renewable PPAs, you're already behind. The economics are changing faster than most models reflect. Second, think in systems, not silos. Projects that integrate renewables, hydrogen, and end-use industries will outperform standalone plants. Third, act globally but build locally. Align your project with regions where renewables are abundant, water is available, and infrastructure can scale. Fourth, secure your offtake early, whether through industrial partners, ammonia buyers, or export agreements. Early commitments lock in value and de-risk your financing. Finally, build flexibility into your design. Hydrogen technology is evolving so quickly that modular, upgradable systems will outperform fixed, rigid designs. Now let's take a step back and see the bigger picture. The world needs to cut carbon emissions by more than half this decade to stay on track for net zero. Green hydrogen can contribute up to 20% of that reduction by 2050, but only if it scales affordably. Cheap renewables and new electrolyzers make that possible. Together, they turn hydrogen from a niche experiment into a mainstream solution. We're entering an era where hydrogen isn't just talked about in pilot plants and policy reports, but deployed at scale across industries and continents. It's an era defined by collaboration between renewable developers, technology manufacturers, financiers, and policymakers. It's also an era defined by opportunity, the chance to build entirely new industrial value chains, powered not by oil or gas, but by clean molecules made from sunlight and water. Hydrogen's moment isn't coming, it's here. And those who understand the convergence of cheap renewables and next-generation electrolyzers will be the ones to shape it. Whether you're building the next export hub, developing a domestic hydrogen cluster, or advising on feasibility studies, this is the time to act. The pieces are finally falling into place. Cost reductions, policy support, industrial demand, and global partnerships. What remains is execution. Disciplined, informed, and bold execution. At Rene Energy and H2 Hub, we're helping developers and consultants navigate this moment with the right tools, templates, and simulators. From feasibility modeling to financial analysis, from offtake structuring to project design, our platform provides the resources you need to evaluate, plan, and deliver real-world hydrogen projects. You don't have to watch the hydrogen revolution happen. You can be part of it. Visit h2hubreneenergy.com to access project simulators, templates, and expert-driven resources designed to make your hydrogen journey faster and smarter. Because cheap renewables and new electrolyzers have set the stage, now it's your turn to make the move. The hydrogen era isn't waiting. The time to build is now.